Good afternoon folks, welcome back to National 5 Calculations. We are on the home stretch now because there's only one type left to go and it is energy calculations usually involved in uh, releasing the heat from molecules when you burn them. I can write on this because I don't need to keep this anymore. Excellent. Now, um, we, uh, we, it would be useful to know from time to time how much energy comes from burning certain fuels so we can compare fuels like, for example, the terrible fuels we currently use to power most cars which are hydrocarbons compared to, for example, hydrogen gas, which is what we should be powering vehicles with, in my opinion. Um, so we need this equation here, which we steal from our brothers and sisters in the physics department. We steal this equation here. Energy is C times M times delta T. Now, what is this? This is a constant. I'm not going to go into too much what it means. It's called a specific heat capacity, and it's to do with the liquid that you are heating up when you're burning your fuel. You can't stick the thermometer straight into a flame. Your thermometer would go bang. Um, and anyway, it doesn't necessarily tell you what's going on very well because what we're doing is we're trying to burn a fuel underneath here and hopefully catching all the heat, which we won't do, but that's beside the point, in a nice big container of water. So here's our little container of fuel. Here's our water. Um, and here is a thermometer sitting in the water. So C is to do with the nature of this water. It's in your data book, and its value is 4.18. In fact, all of these three terms are all to do with the water, if that helps you to remember it. They're all to do with this container of water. M is the mass of the water. Slight pain in the bum has got to be in kilograms. So that's the mass of the H2O, and it's got to be in kilograms. Uh, if they give you it in grams, you'll have to multiply... Sorry, my apologies. If they, if they give you it in grams, they'll have to uh, divide by 1,000. So grams to kilograms, divide by 1,000. Uh, and lastly, we've got the delta T, which is the change in temperature. Um, so if you started at, say, 20 Celsius, and you heated up the water to go to 45 Celsius, then the change between these two is 25 degrees C. Uh, let me pause this and I'll try and find a real world example from the SQA. Right, so we are back with an SQA example um, based on olive oil and frying food. And the introductory waffle here says, when frying food it's recommended that the oil is heated before the food is added. Um, this table gives information about the olive oil used to fry the food. Now, this is a nice one because I like this one. This is a sneaky one. Remember I said that Cm and delta T are all to do with the water here. Well, you're not heating water here. You're heating olive oil. So it requires you to um, definitely uh, RTQ here. You need to read the question. So the olive oil is being heated. And the information in the table here gives the f uh, is about olive oil. So just for a, an unusual change, they've said specific heat capacity. That's the C number. So everybody's used to using 4.18, and that's true for water when you're heating the water, but we're not heating water today. Um, so 1.97 is the value of C. They're giving you the mass of the olive oil heated, but look, it's in grams. And I say the mass needed to be in kilograms. Uh, and they've given you the initial temperature. And they're, they're asking you to calculate the energy. So we are indeed requiring to calculate E. So we will need to, to know C times M times delta T. Now, the C, as I said, is unusual because it's today is 1.97. The mass of the olive oil that we're, we're heating up is 1,500 grams, so we need to divide by 1,000, you end up with 1.5. And the delta T, the starting temperature, that's what that means, initial temperature is 20, but that's not the delta. Delta means change in. So somewhere else in the question, there must be the final temperature, and then we can work out the difference between the two by subtracting them. Uh, da, 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 there we go. So calculate the energy required to increase the temperature of the olive oil to 180. So we're going from 20 all the way up to 180, which is a delta of 160. Delta just means difference, remember? So that is our calculation today, folks. Um, which actually, if you look at that, the reason that's three marks 
is that people are programmed, including me, most of the time just to instantly put 4.18 for this specific heat capacity. And it's why it's such a nasty question. If you did 4.18, by the way, you still get 2 out of 3. Uh, so 1.97 times 1.5 times 160 gives us 472.8473 is the energy in kilojoules. You don't even need the unit because it gives it in kilojoules. Look back at my first video where I warned about units in chemistry. I suggest not to put them in your answers. Um, although it really does boil my brains from a science point of view. But if it gives you the unit there, don't put an energy unit in here because you could easily screw it up by looking at what's the unit again and putting that. No, just don't do it. 473, job's done. So, quick recap on the last of our calculations, guys. It's all to do with measuring energy that you get or requiring, or sorry, energy that you require, basically, in this case, to change the temperature of something. It's most often done in this case, but this olive oil question was a nice, nasty one. That's why I like it. Um, you need to know three things about the stuff that you're heating up. You need to know its specific heat capacity. I'm not going to go into what that means. Go and ask the physics department if you're interested. It is an interesting thing, though. Um, and it explains why we tend to use water to cool down a car engine, for example. Um, so for water, it's 4.18. For something else, the question would have to tell you, just like they did there. You need to know the mass of the stuff you're heating, and it's got to be in kilograms. And you need to know the delta T, which is the change in temperature from where you start to where you end up. Thanks for listening, folks. Th those have been our five types of calculation for N5. I'm just going to go and pour myself a glass of water and then try and tackle the ones for higher chemistry. Thank you for listening to this series. I hope it's been of help to you. Bye-bye.